What's up folks, welcome to another episode of The Trail Hunter and thank you for tuning in. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing the uh, Z-Pax Nero Ultralight backpack as well as giving you guys some insight as to what it's like ordering um, one of these backpacks from the US all the way over here to the UK. Let's go. So I've been doing a lot of research on ultralight backpacks and backpacking gear and um, I found out that most of the best companies are out in the US and they're really small uh, US based companies and one of which is Z-Pax. Z-Pax is quite a uh, popular brand out in the US due to the fact that they make all of their backpacking gear out of this ultralight material named Dyneema. Dyneema composite also known as uh, Cuban fiber in the hiking community um, is mainly used for making sailboat sails out of um, fishing nets and um, military grade fabrics for their clothing and things like that. Uh, recently though US based companies have been using it to make tents, bivvies, tarps and even backpacks just like this one. Compared to traditional backpacks which are made out of a ripstop nylon, these backpacks which are made out of Dyneema gram for gram are much stronger, much lighter and much more durable as well as being waterproof. So I personally was looking for a backpack which was um, small enough and light enough uh, to fit all of my gear as well as being able to fit in the overhead storage of a airplane. So essentially any backpack that I went for had to be able to hold a capacity of uh, around 7 kilos which is about 15 pounds. So looking online and doing all that research I found this backpack which is the Z-Pax Nero Ultralight Backpack. I got it made to order straight from the Z-Pax website. Um, it took about four weeks to be shipped uh, and then it took a further maybe week and a half to two weeks to arrive at my door. So before I go into all of the things that I liked and disliked about this backpack, let's go over some of the specifications. The Z-Pax Nero's main volume is 25 litres, but if you combine the front pocket and the side pockets, it goes up to 38 litres. I tested this backpack out with all of my gear and it was definitely a tight squeeze. I couldn't quite fit everything inside the backpack, so I had to put things on the outside. Um, but taking everything on a plane uh, and putting it in the overhead storage, I'm not quite sure uh, if I'd be able to actually be able to take this backpack on the plane if, got, if it's got loads of things on the outside. So I highly uh, recommend that um, if you have this backpack and you take it on planes and it's all the luggage that you have, that you bring a bug, uh, bum bag with you uh, to have on your person so that you can at least have a little bit more storage that way. Maybe there's an upside to having that issue because with this backpack, because it's so small, it would definitely limit me to the amount of stuff that I'm actually going to be taking with me. Um, as a minimalist, it's really important to actually not bring such a massive backpack so that you don't end up um, hoarding loads of stuff on your travels. You actually limit yourself with a backpack this size. Um, this size was actually quite ample, but it's just a shame that I couldn't quite fit everything on the inside. So if I was taking this on a plane, it'd be a bit of a... Um, bit of a risk. Okay let's talk about the weight of this backpack. The Z-Pax Nero weighs in at 10.9 ounces with a uh, fabric weight of 98 grams per square meter which is a seriously thin fabric. So if you count in those grams the Z-Pax Nero might be right up your street although uh, the durability factor might be a bit depleted due to the fact that the uh, material is super thin. It feels very much like a plastic kind of bag kind of texture although because it's made of Dyneema it is an ultra strong material so there are backpacks out there like the HMG uh, 2400 which I use uh, a lot more regularly and that's made of almost double the thickness and you can really tell that it's a really thick uh, material whereas this one's so thin. I'd be a little bit worried um, about kind of snagging it on things whether it would rip or not. If something's sharp I think it can actually get punctured but uh, in terms of like strength and whether it will rip under like weight it's, it's a pretty good uh, strong material in that respect. One thing I did find is that I found it really weird to hold such a light backpack in your hand. When this thing's completely empty you can hold it in your hand and it just feels so feather light it's incredible and the fact that people take this on a two and a half thousand mile through hike of the PCT and use only this backpack I find it absolutely incredible and uh, a massive achievement on Z-Pack's part for uh, creating a backpack that's so light with so many um, ultralight backpacking features. It's a really, really good backpack, um, but it's just actually really quite small. Okay, let's cut to the chase and uh, get on to the conversation about pricing and shipping. It's really important to bear in mind that if you're buying this from the US, um, that you're gonna have to pay a little bit of extra cash uh, to pay for the shipping. 
Um, also, don't forget that when you're purchasing things online from the US overseas, then you're going to have to pay the tax separately. So when it arrives into the UK, it's very likely that it's going to get held into customs and you're going to have to pay the customs charge as well as the tax on top of that. So I did a few uh, little adding up calculations and looked at my receipts and um, I thought I'd go over with you exactly how much these Epax Nero cost to buy it, ship it and get it through customs straight to my door. So um, yeah, let's look at that now. So looking at the Nero at the time of making this video, you will pay $199 for the backpack itself plus $24 in shipping, $10.95 for the tax on top and when it's overseas in the UK, a £40 customs charge, which is really steep. So in total for the z Pax Nero, you will pay somewhere in the region of 218 British pounds uh, for everything. That's shipping, purchasing, custom charge tax, and getting it over here. It sounds like quite a lot of money, but this thing is definitely made to last. Um, and as I said earlier, people do actually hike the entirety of the PCT, which is 2,565 point something miles, which is just insane. So um, you're definitely getting um, a lot of bang for your buck with this backpack. And I do know that these backpacks are designed to last a lot longer than your run-of-the-mill ripstop nylon Ospreys and Patagonias. Uh, one more thing to add is, as I said before at the beginning of the video, um, Z-Packs do make all of their backpacks and hiking gear to order, so you are going to be waiting up to about four weeks for this thing to ship, especially in the busy hiking season, which is in the spring to early summer. Once it was shipped after four weeks, it took about a week and a half to two weeks for it to arrive at my door, depending on how Johnny on the spot you are with paying all the customs charges and... Um, getting it couriered over here. Uh, one piece of advice that I would give you is that Parcel Force actually gave me this advice as well. And they said that um, when you're purchasing off the z -Pax website, don't bother paying for any express charges because it will not get your backpack to your door any quicker because it's only going to get held in customs anyway and be wasting a little bit of extra cash for nothing. And uh, sad to say that I actually made that mistake. I paid for the express shipping. And uh, when I got um, Parcel Force on the phone, they told me that. So uh, any other gear that I've bought overseas and got sent over here, it got sent to me in exactly the same time and I sell, saved myself a little bit of cash as well. Okay, so we've talked about some of the specifications and shipping the backpack over here. Now let's talk about some of the features. The z Pax Nero comes with a ginormous uh, front mesh pocket, which is perfect for storing regularly used items. One of my favourite features of the backpack is the roll down top which is cinched down on either side by two side release buckle clips which are tightened by uh, pulling the cords on the side. Having the roll down top also keeps this backpack waterproof and expandable so it does say 25 litres for the main compartment but if you roll it up a little bit I think you can get a little bit more room in there too. When you unroll the top of the backpack you'll find two tiny little tabs which allow you to pull apart the velcro strip which seals the backpack on the inside. I actually really really like these velcro strips, um, they're just a really nice little touch to a backpack that um, is just really well considered in every aspect of its design. It just really makes opening and closing the backpack a lot easier and it makes the whole process uh, neater as well so uh, you can make sure that you can seal the backpack uh, really well with these two tabs. It comes with some really huge um, side pockets as well, which are also made out of Dyneema composite, so they're waterproof. Um, I do believe that on the bottom they have a little drainage hole as well, if I'm correct. Yeah, tiny little drainage hole, uh, so that if it really starts pouring down with rain, they won't fill up with water. The z Pax Nero has two really, really wide um, shoulder straps. Um, they're much, much wider than most of the backpacks I've found out in the US. Um, it's really good for distributing the weight on your shoulders and that's really important seeing as that the hip belt on this backpack is only there to um, make the backpack more stable on your body. The hip belt doesn't distribute any weight to your hips. You literally rely only on your shoulder straps to distribute the weight so these really thick pads really do help. Let's talk about hip belts now. Um, the hip belt on the z Pax Nero, as I said before, is a really thin um, woven strip of nylon with a buckle clip on it in the center. Um, as I mentioned before, this um, hip belt is only designed to bring more stability to the backpack so that you can um, fasten it to your body a lot more securely. It's not there at all for distributing any weight. Um, I mean, it does a really small amount, but I wouldn't want to rely on this too much simply because if you had too much weight and you relied on the hip belt to, uh, to distribute the weight to your hips, you might actually end up ripping the backpack and damaging the seams where it's connected to the main body. Uh, the hip belt for me is a little bit of a downside for this backpack because it's so thin and so light you can't really kit it out with any hip belt pockets 
and on other backpacks that I've used, I really like using the hip belt to distribute the weight and it actually makes the backpack feel so much lighter. That said, this backpack is designed for carrying ultra light gear. So if you pack really smart and you don't have too much food and water on you, you shouldn't even really need a hip belt with this pack. Um, but I like a few extra creature comforts, plus I carry a drone and a few other bits and bobs for filming my, um, for filming my videos. Uh, so having a hip belt which is used for distributing weight is um, a bit of a plus for me. Next up let's talk about frames. The Z-Pax Nero has absolutely zero frames um, and what that means is it has no kind of wire mesh frame going around here which distributes all the weight to the hip belt. Um, with this backpack you can actually squeeze it, scrunch it, you can actually fold it up into a ball um, because it's literally just a plastic bag with um, some shoulder straps on it that is literally all it is this backpack does come with a foam insert for sticking onto the back and I think what that's used for is for uh, making sure that um, if your back gets really sweaty then it doesn't chafe too much it actually doubles up as a really handy kind of sitting pad so if it rains and you want to sit down and the back of your pack is dry then you can always take this out and um, sit on the floor if it's a little bit wet so um, that's quite a it's quite a handy little double up feature of this pad although it's a little bit flimsy it's got these kind of cords that kind of keep it tight into the backpack and they start to itch and scratch your back and I just found it quite an uncomfortable backpack to wear if I was carrying a little bit of extra weight um, but if I was carrying hardly anything um, then yeah I don't think I would need to worry about that too much but because I carry a little bit of extra weight um, it gets a little bit uncomfortable. Looking um, still at the back of the backpack you can actually um, adjust the torso height of this because um, on the back you've got some little inserts that you can unhinge the shoulder straps and then put them in one, two or three uh, levels up or down so um, that's quite a handy little feature so I like that they made this backpack a one-size-fits-all pack so when you go on their website and go to order I don't think they actually have a sizing option so yeah one size does actually fit all. Okay so just a couple more features to go uh, this backpack does in fact have a sternum strap for fastening it to your torso a lot more tightly also it has a little hook on the top for hanging it daisy chain on this backpack is really really long so you can clip loads of stuff to it although if you had one thing in every single one of these it would look a little bit ridiculous inside the backpack there is literally nothing it's just an empty uh, compartment you can see that all of the seams are actually taped inside this so it makes it waterproof um, I don't know how durable they are but I haven't really read any uh, bad reviews on this backpack leaking straight out of the box so um, yeah it looks really nice and tidy the stitch is good um, the fabric looks really durable uh, the velcro strip that's on the inside I think um, looks like it's gonna last quite a long time and um, yeah I really um, like the fact that it's just a really simple backpack um, if you pack this backpack properly you shouldn't really have any problems with locating all of your gear um, but yeah okay let's talk about some of the things that I uh, didn't quite like about this backpack uh, the first thing is that the hip belt doesn't have any pockets on it. Um, I'm a real big fan of big hip belt pockets so that you can use it as like a, a utility belt while you're hiking. You can keep snacks in there, your phone, your camera, um, any valuables like your keys, they're always to hand. Um, so yeah, I do, like, as I said before, I definitely recommend having a bum bag with you or trousers with lots of pockets on just to give you that added uh, little bit of extra storage. Uh, the maximum um, load that this backpack can hold is about nine kilos. So it gives me a couple more kilos worth of weight to play with. Although I do believe that even seven kilos is kind of pushing it with this backpack. It just makes it a little bit uncomfortable. So um, yeah, it's a lightweight backpack. Uh, I'm kind of pushing it with my weight. Um, but yeah, overall the Z-Pax Nero is a really fantastic ultra light, ultra strong um, Dyneema backpack. But I just feel that for my needs, I need a backpack that's just a wee bit bigger with all of the same features plus more, which will also give me that added flexibility for when I'm up in a plane, uh, up a mountain, when I'm hiking around, when I'm not hiking, and when I'm on a through hike on the PCT as well. So yeah, uh, added flexibility is what I'm after. Okay guys, thank you very much for tuning in to uh, this review of the Z-Pax Nero Ultralight Dyneema Backpack. Don't forget to head over to my website, which is thetrailhunter.com for a full written review of this backpack, as well as all of my hikes, itineraries, gear reviews, gear lists, and much, much more. So uh, yeah, don't forget to head over to that. Okay guys, if you found this video at all useful, then hit that thumbs up, subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. 